Hi, I'm Tim Ronick from Axon Nobel, and I'm currently a board member with the SCRS. And we're here today to talk about corrosion protection. So, so let's, we, we're walking our car through the repair process. We've, we've applied the weld through primer, you know, when we put the panel on. We have went back with an epoxy. Now we've, we've applied our seam sealer. Um, you know, in my mind, the, the next obvious step is going to be the, the painting process. Um, the refinish process, but after that refinish process, um, and I'll kind of lump these into the, the same category, um, just because they're they're after that refinish process. But you've got your cavity waxes, you know, first of all, which you may apply, and um, then you've got your undercoating products that are they're also applied in some instances. So let's kind of take those on one at a time. Let's let's talk about cavity waxes and how those are used and and what those those really serve the purpose of. Uh, cavity waxes are used in areas where water could be trapped. So, uh, door, between the door skin and a hem, f front rails, hood. Um, question, you know, you're replacing a brand new hood on a Camry. What corrosion protection items would you put on that brand new hood? You would put on, by factory, a seam sealer tape because that comes no seam sealer. You would put in cavity wax. Cavity wax would be put on after it's painted. Make sure we don't put it on beforehand because it's like trying to paint, paint over grease or oil. It ain't gonna stick. But here's something else. Toyota says on the front hood, you put a soft, non, soft chip primer. And what do you mean? Well, they want a primer along the front edge of that hood to prevent rock chips. That's all it is, most guys, but they don't know it. So uh, w back to the cavity wax, it's uh, put in rockers, B-pillars, quarter panels, deck lids, wherever that their OE specifies that they want the cavity wax. Go back to the Toyota line, they want cavity wax underneath the hood hinge and the uh, front uh, reinforcement. And many manufacturers now, I think that, you know, depending on what system, what application method you use for the cavity wax, uh, a lot of the companies produce aerosol versions and they're providing um, wands. And these oh, wands, yeah. The, you, the good old days, we used to have the big guns with these right. long, um, now that we have fle little flexible wands and put it on the edge of a, a spray you know, can. So there's no excuse not to use it. You just spray it on there and you just put it in I, there. I think just, you know, for example, the, you can get a wand that ranges maybe from six inches up to 36 inches in, in many cases. And, and the, you know, the purpose of those wands um, is to, to feed in those areas, like you said, the, the places you can't reach, you know, and, and put two, you know, one to two heavy coats of, of the cavity wax on those areas so water's not, a, not attacking that after the fact. That's right. and, and that, you know, again, going back to this whole process we've talked about, in my eyes, that's one of the things we see most commonly omitted from the repair procedure, which is one of the easiest things to do at the end, is, is to put the cavity wax in. But when you go and look, you know, you take a boroscope, maybe on a post-repair inspection, and you slide it inside a rocker or behind a quarter or something, no cavity wax. And, and in a lot of cases, these areas where it's burnt the e-coat off from welding on the outside, it's, it's beginning to rust because there's been nothing there to protect it. People have avoided doing some of these procedures, I believe, because there's been no real ability to hold them accountable. Technology is making it with boroscopes and the ability to be able to go and in, in invasively inspect something without causing damage. You're able to go in and see whether or not somebody actually did what they said they did rather than just believing them. Um, it's, it's creating an opportunity for people to be a little liable for their repairs into the future. And being able to put back that factory corrosion protection that needs to be there, people, if they don't, they're gonna be held accountable to that at some point in the future if a consumer hangs onto their car. Well, I think one of the interesting things about a lot of the cavity waxes now on the market is a lot of them have self-healing properties. So if, if something ever, you know, scrapes that off or comes into contact with it, it's, it's gonna self-heal back around that area to, to keep it um, 
from from rusting or, or having any corrosion issues down the road? Well, what it does is it sort of like, it keeps the water from attacking the metal. It, it's not a uh, where we look at it as a primer, or a epoxy primer. It's an area that just seals off these areas. It uh, seeps into the crevices in these areas so that uh, water can't get into them. And that's what's going to cause your uh, corrosion. One, one word of caution. Some, some of these enclosed panels have areas where they do let moisture out. So a technician has to be aware of those where not too much cavity wax goes in and it actually seals off those drainage holes. We've seen that quite a bit sometimes yeah, in too. close repair inspections. So with, you know, cavity wax, um, another thing that may commonly be used will be undercoat. You know, on the back side, maybe underneath rear body panels in a, in a, in a inner outer wheelhouse um, when you've replaced the quarter uh, strut strut towers maybe you think yeah, maybe? well the, those are usually a very uh, they're a shock absorbing type of material um, they're not designed for hiding bad body work which most get well they're yeah. used a lot for that that's though, right? what they use it for yeah you know, the the better ones on the market are a thinner material um, I would suggest if somebody is using that to make a letdown panel with it, uh, one coat, then two coats, three coats, four coats, to see the texture so they can match up the texture. Another item that you might want to put in that undercoating would be uh, stone guards and chip guards. Right, the, the, the gravel guard. Yeah, those are you know, along the edges of the quarter panel, the hood, uh, I mean the fenders, edges, quarter panels. Um, those would be an item that, depending on the would go on prior to being painted probably in most instances. So those would be another little categories that you'd put those underneath uh, with the undercoatings. And all those, you know, are going to work in conjunction with one another, which is what we've been talking about, you know, start to finish. It's not, it's not one line. It's not one item. It's not one operation. It's a process. And it, you know, it's, it's, it's from the start of the repair to the finish of the repair. Um, and everywhere throughout that process, you're, you're adding certain things, you know, the well through primer, then you, your epoxy, then your seams, so your cavity wax undercoating, your chip guards. I mean, all those are items and processes and procedures that are all part of corrosive protection. So one of the things that a, a shop really kind of needs to evaluate is within all those processes, how much time is it really taking for each individual process? What's the cumulative total of that time? as well as what's the expense in materials? And does one line really cover all that expense and, and all that time that's, that's been invested in that? If you're looking for more information on this or other topics, visit us on the web with a Society of Collision Repair Specialists and you can find us at scrs.com.